Hello, everyone. This is Mighty Stream, and I'm excited to do the Just for Today meditation with you for April 17th. I want to make sure that I go ahead and do the podcast for April 17th uh, tonight, because I know for many people, uh, tomorrow will be a very, very busy day uh, celebrating Easter Sunday. Um, and so I just want to make sure that I am uh, scheduled and well into uh, your morning, ready for you when you wake up and you begin your preparations, that you should continue um, the habit of having uh, time for yourself, time for prayer, time for uh, considering different meditations. Uh, I have several that I enjoy. This is just one that I know uh, most people can benefit from, whether they are in recovery or not. So this is one that I'm excited to do with you. Let's take a moment of silence followed by the wee version of the serenity prayer. Uh, let's take that moment of silence now. Thank you. God, grant us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change the courage to change the things that we can, and the wisdom to know the difference, please, and thank you. You know, I'm excited about um, everything that's going on around me. Even some of the people uh, in my life that may be struggling, I am excited to watch uh, how they are growing and becoming open to um, applying spiritual principles. I just think that a lot is going on in the world. Our prayers are with uh, Ukraine and um, even people from Russia are trying to leave Russia and uh, get out of their country as well. So uh, we, we are aware in recovery, uh, we become more aware of the world around us, right? Uh, one thing that we say is that we become productive members of society. And a lot of times becoming productive means that now we have exposure to things that we never, we never considered. I mean, um, I never was a person that was interested in politics or the news. Uh, and now I find myself having opinions about politics and the news, right? I'm growing in many ways. Uh, and so our spiritual principles should be broadening us. I am brought to you by Hope Through Navigation. This is the Hood Recovery Services. Hood stands for Hope Offered On Demand. And I am excited to be working this program. Uh, Every day, I try to make sure that I come into my home office and I spend some time uh, working on some aspect of what I'm envisioning uh, for um, the podcast, as well as developing an app that will allow us to offer people what they need when they need it. Okay, let's take a look at this. This is a pretty hot topic. This is important, especially right now, as we're getting back into making face-to-face -face meetings. April 17th, the title is Priority Meetings. I initially felt that it would be impossible to attend more than one or two meetings a week. It just wouldn't fit in with my busy schedule. I later learned that my priorities were 180 degrees reversed. I was the, it was the everything else that would have to fit into my meeting schedule. Let me repeat that. I initially felt that it would be impossible to attend more than one or two meetings a week. It just wouldn't fit in with my busy schedule. I later learned that my priorities were 180 degrees reversed. It was the everything else that would have to fit into my meeting schedule. Uh, so the reading of that is a, a little bit awkward. Grammatically speaking, I would change a few things. But nonetheless, the point that is being made here is that what used to be a priority 
or that are not a priority is now our priority. And so we're talking about meetings. Let's read it. Some of us attended meetings infrequently when we first came to Narcotics Anonymous, then wondered why we couldn't stay clean. What we soon learned was that if we wanted to stay clean, we had to make meeting attendance our priority. So we begin again, began again. Following our sponsor's suggestion, we made a commitment to attend 90 meetings in 90 days. We identified ourselves as newcomers for our first 30 days so that others could get to know us. At our sponsor's direction, we stopped talking long enough to learn to listen. We soon began to look forward to meetings and we began to stay clean. Today, we attend meetings for a variety of reasons. Sometimes we go to meetings to share our experience, strength and hope with other or with newer members. Sometimes we go to see our friends and sometimes we go just because we need a hug. Occasionally we leave a meeting and realize that we haven't really heard a word that has been said, but we still feel better. The atmosphere of love and joy that fills our meetings has kept us clean another day. No matter how hectic our schedule, we make meeting attendance our priority. Just for today, in my heart, I know that meetings benefit me in all kinds of ways. Today, I want what's good for me. I will attend a meeting. Powerful, powerful, powerful. How are you doing with that? How are you feeling about face-to-face -face meetings again? How are you feeling about, um, you know, making meetings a priority? I think many people were always trying to either make a Zoom meeting or make a smaller version of an in, uh, in, in-person meeting. Um, but somehow along the way of the last two years of this ri ridiculous, painful pandemic, people have kind of uh, gotten away from in-person in meetings. I was having a discussion with a really good childhood friend of mine. And she was reminding me that meeting makers make it. She always calls me and invites me to particular in-person meetings that she goes to. And I'm just not a fond of, a fond of those. I think if I was desperate, <laughs> I would go anywhere. But I'm just not really fond of those particular meetings. However, there are some that I have been frequenting uh, here in the last month. Um, and of course, I've been doing a, a Monday night meeting uh, for a few months now. Uh, and so I believe for me, meetings are still a priority. But I want to tell you something. And I don't know if you can relate to this because you see the second paragraph that says we follow our sponsor suggestions, commit to 90 meetings in 90 days. We identify um, ourselves as newcomers for the first 90 days. Uh, we stop sharing, right? Stop talking long enough to listen. Um, my thought about that is I have gotten to the point where sharing is not like high on my list of to-dos when I go to the meeting. Um, there's like this new new group of individuals. There's a few of us old timers still around. And then we have a few older, older timers, right? With 30 years or more, right? Uh, and then we got that group of us that all kind of came into the program around the same time. And we kind of range between, I would say 27 to 29 years. It's, it's like, I get my clean date and then a couple of weeks, you know, another person in the program gets theirs. And we kind of all know uh, in fact, I got a, um, I had someone post something on a, a post of mine on Facebook, and uh, they were letting me know that they're going to have 20 years. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. And I rattled off their clean date like it was my own, right? And I haven't seen this person in probably five years. It's been a while. 
but I remember their clean day. I don't remember everybody's, but I remember their clean day. Uh, and so I think that somehow we become accustomed to one another. And I believe now when I go to a meeting, this new group of individuals um, are starting to do more service work. They are right around that two to three year mark. Um, and they're stepping up and they're doing service work. And it seems like we just keep passing the torch um, to the newer members to do the service work. And when we're called upon as old timers, we give our experience, strength and hope. Um, unless I'm really you know, devastated or hurting, I really, I don't go to share, I go to listen. My posture in the meeting now is about having uh, comfortable attentiveness to whoever is speaking, whoever is sharing so that they know that I believe in them and I'm listening to them share who they are. I want to encourage you to do that. I want to encourage you to be uh, not only a giver, you know, in the meeting uh, where you give your experience, strength, and hope, but you're also a taker. Like you are receiving on the receiving end of other people sharing. And I think it makes the meeting more rich. It makes it more um, recovery oriented when there's this consistent interaction and dialogue of people giving and taking, giving and taking. Um, you know, one of my pet peeves is when people come into the meetings and they always are in the first, first one or two people to share. And then not only do they, you know, make sure that they're in the first one or two people to share, but they also have a tendency to go way over um, they're, they're a lot of time. And it always is awkward when the chairperson has to shut down that person's share. Um, and it, when it happens repetitively, you begin to wonder, like, what, what's the purpose in all of that? Um, a person can be a book thumper. We call them book thumpers, like Bible thumpers, book thumpers, a basic text thumper, uh, quoting the basic text and but if you don't have the fruit of all of this, you know, it goes in one ear and out of, out of the other. What we learned when I came here was that what is shared from the heart will touch the heart. And, and so today I wanna to encourage you, whether it is, you know, in the rooms of recovery or at work, um, regardless of what you're doing, whatever you are participating in, I want you to be the type of person where people they know that you're full of wisdom, but it's not like an expectation on you to always be the one uh, in the know, always the one with the knowledge. I uh, went to a leadership uh, event this past week and the main speaker was uh, saying that one of the ways that you can make sure uh, that you're building your team is that you don't want it to come across like you're, you're the one with all the knowledge. You want people on your team to know more than you, especially in the areas in which you've hired them. And you want to allow them to give you answers and to be able to express what they're thinking uh, and being patient enough to listen to them instead of always directing and controlling everything. You want to be, build the type of relationship with people where they, they know that you have something to give, but they also know that you're willing to listen uh, to them and interact and do life with them. My name is Mighty Stream. I'm brought to you by Hope Through Navigation. This is the Hood Recovery Services Program. You can reach me at Recovery of Hope. 21 at gmail.com. I look forward to talking to you soon. Sometime tomorrow evening, we'll take care of Monday's reading, okay? We'll do the April 18th, and maybe we can get in the fashion of having them ready to go at midnight. They post automatically to the YouTube channel. I look forward to talking to you again.